Hi, this is Ron Sipsick. In this particular video, we're going to take a look at the long-run break-even position of a monopolistically competitive firm. If you had a chance to look at my last video on monopolistic competition, I showed, uh, showed how a monopolistically competitive firm uh, attempts to maximize profits. So if we look at the picture over here on the left, we see basically a short-run profit position. So let's just go ahead and note that. The picture on the left represents a short run, short run profit position. So in the short run, this firm is actually profitable. Its price, notice its price is above ATC at QM. So it has this profit box, this green profit box, and that represents the area of the firm's profit. The width being average profit, the length uh, the length being Q, so if you take the width, average profit, times the length Q, you get the total profit. So this, this box actually represents the total profit of this monopolistically competitive firm. This might be a hair salon or perhaps a car maintenance place. There's lots of examples. could be a restaurant in certain cities. Uh, you could have a, a, a relatively large number of relatively small restaurants and and uh, it, it could be a number of type of firms fitting into this category as we talked about in the last video. Again, notice that the demand curve is relatively flat, which means there are, are significant, a significant number of close substitutes to this firm's product. And the MR curve uh, is steeper than the demand curve, but it too is relatively flat. Okay, and then we see that the firm, like any profit-making firm, wants to maximize profits and would try to operate where MC equals MR. So we identify the quantity where MC equals MR, read up to the demand curve, we get the profit maximizing price. Again, this is not the maximum price. There are prices above P max that this firm could charge, but this is the profit maximizing price. Why? Because if the firm charges this price, it sells Q max, and Q max is where the firm uh, operates where MC equals MR. Now, this firm has tools within its, uh, within its uh, toolkit to try to keep its demand curve out to the right and to try to hold on to market share. And so this firm, as we said in the earlier video, will try to engage in what we call product, product differentiation. I don't have room to write that whole word out, but product differentiation. And in the last video, I talked about the four P's of marketing. Now, price, of course, is one of those variables, uh, but changes in price move us along the demand curve. However, there are three non-price factors, uh, three non-price P's that the firm can resort to. Changes in the product itself, promotion, and placement in terms of how it distributes the product. So again, in that last video, I looked at the four P's of marketing and how uh, you know advertising campaigns and things like that can actually shift the demand curve and help the firm not only increase its market share but potentially make its buyers less price sensitive. Okay, and then if what I'm talking about is confusing to you, going I, I don't know what this guy's talking about. You might want to go back and look at the the preceding video where I introduce the monopolistically competitive model. So this firm is doing everything it can to push its demand curve to the right and to steepen its demand curve. And in the short run, this firm is going to be able to hold on to a profit position. But the problem is, in the long run, firms will be able to enter. And one of the characteristics of monopolistic competition is entry, relatively easy entry. So for instance, hair salons. It may take a hair, uh, somebody a while to start their own hair salon, but it's not as difficult to enter the hair salon market in a particular town or city than it is to stay, say to start an automobile company or to start a smartphone company. So there are certain markets which are fairly easy to enter, enter and there are markets which are fairly difficult to enter. In the case of monopolistic competition, we're assuming that the firm that, that firms can enter. Now the effect of entry is to push the firm's demand curve to the left. So I'm showing a two-part sequence here. I'm showing the short run where the firm is in a profit position. Then I'm showing the long run where the firm is in a break-even position. And I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. 
But what that demand curve had actually started out way up here, right? So if we're if we're going from this picture here to this picture here, what's happened here is that demand curve has slid to the left. What has driven that demand curve to the left? It's entry. Entry. As firms enter this particular market, existing firms will lose market share. So this is actually a loss of market share. The firm is losing market share. As the firm loses customers to other firms that are entering the market, that demand curve is going to begin to track to the left. As the demand curve tracks to the left, the MR curve is also going to track to the left. Remember, if you move the demand curve, you're going to move the MR curve because the MR curve is a function of the demand curve. So that demand curve will track to the left, track to the left, track to the left. When will it stop tracking to the left? It'll stop tracking to the left when it is just tangent to the ATC curve. Why? Because at that point, price equals ATC, which means the firm is just breaking even. So over here, you can see that the price is greater than ATC. If we go back over to this picture, we see that the price is up here, and we see that ATC is down here. Well, price, price is greater than ATC over here. And so the firm is in a profit position. But over here, that demand curve has tracked to the left, and now price equals ATC. We're at a break-even point. Now, this is economic break-even, not accounting break-even. Accounting break-even, um, uh, excuse me, economic break-even means the firm is still earning an accounting profit. And I talk about that in one of my earlier videos. So this price, this profit-maximizing price, now affords the firm only a break-even position. And the firm, is, the, the firm has been pushed into this position because of entry. So notice the progression. Again, entry leads to what? Entry leads to declining prices. The price was way up here. Remember, the price was way up here when the firm was in a profit position. Now the price is way down here. Notice also that the quantity was way up here when the firm was in a profit position. Now the quantity is way down here. So as, as the demand curve slides to the left, both the price and the profit maximizing quantity decrease. And the firm moves to what we call a, a long run break even position. Now again, that doesn't mean that firms in a, in, in a particular, let's say, hair salon market can't be profitable again. But there would have to be some factor in that market that increases overall market demand. For instance, let's say that the city prospers, begins to prosper and grow for some reason. Maybe demographically, people start moving into this city and uh, there's reasons to be attracted to living in this city, perhaps uh, there, there's great job opportunities in this city and so there's an increase in the population and there's an increase in incomes and that pushes up the demand for things like hairstyling services or for restaurants. Well, that could actually push, push a, a given firm's demand curve back out to the right. We're not saying that a firm never can earn an economic profit again. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is, is that if you hold all of the market demand factors constant, firms that are earning a profit will find that they lose that profit position over time because of entry. Entry will, uh, profits will actually be like uh, a magnet. They will draw other firms into the market and then those new, new entries will bid away the profits uh, that existing firms have enjoyed. Okay, notice uh, one final point here as long as I've, I've got this all set up. You'll, you'll notice that the break-even position in the monopolistically competitive case is not the same position as break-even in the purely competitive case. If you go back and look at my purely competitive models, you'll see that I, I go through long-run break-even in the purely competitive case. And if we, uh, let me just go ahead and put my, my um, my ruler in here so I can uh, draw a straight line. If you come over here and uh, you look at the minimum point of the ATC curve, if this were a competitive market, I'll use this teal color to show this, if this were, if this were a competitive market, 
the, uh, the firm would be breaking even at the minimum point of the ATC curve. Now, I, I just can't develop all of that theory right now. You need to go back and look at the video. But you'll see that if the firm were to break even at the minimum point of the ATC curve, its price would be below the monopolistically competitive price, and its production rate would be above the um, monopolistically competitive output rate. So what I'm driving at is this idea that if you're talking pure competition, this is not pure competition, this is monopolistic competition, but if you're talking pure competition, the break-even point is at a lower price and the production rate is at a higher quantity. If you're talking monopolistic competition, the monopolistically competitive firm breaks even at what? A higher than competitive price and at a lower than competitive quantity. So the closer you move to monopoly, the closer you move to monopoly, and remember monopolistically competitive firms are closer to monopoly than purely competitive firms, the closer you move, the closer you move to monopoly, the higher the price, the lower the output rate. And that's exactly what this model shows. Both a purely competitive firm and a monopolistically competitive firm break even. Okay, they both break even, but they do not break even at the same point. The purely competitive firm breaks even at the minimum point of the ATC curve. The monopolistically competitive firm does not break even at the minimum point of the ATC curve. It breaks even over here on the left. And uh, that's even though they share a similarity, long run break even, there's a difference in how they how they actually, uh, or where they actually break even. All right, well that concludes this video, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope it has helped you understand the long-run long break-even process in a monopolistically competitive market.